they're all rescue horses. They've been rescued from some unsuitable situation or other, some badly treated. People just seem to ring me up and um, ask me if I'll take them, so I do, to save them being put down. Just stroke her like that, just gently. Just gently, look. You can touch her and stroke her. We work with children and adults with all problems. Sometimes we get really, really nervous children and then we gradually introduce them to the horses and then we see how they're progressing and we get them brushing them and then eventually leading them. We've had some wonderful outcomes. We've had really poorly children that have been so depressed, have moved on and now looking for a career with horses. So we've given them a future. Stand still, Hobson. Are you all right, Jessica? A lot of these children have difficulties in the classroom. It's a stressful place. Coming up here in this environment where everybody's on a level playing field, they can forget all their worries and follow the rules up here. The horses react to them. It's just a totally different experience for them and it's always a positive experience. What's wonderful about what Judith's done here is she's put together uh, an animal sanctuary which is helping humans and humans who are helping horses. When we have a, a situation where people have issues that conventional medicine doctors are finding difficult to treat, it's wonderful to have these alternatives. And here you have autistic uh, and disabled people learning how to overcome their problems through an association with horses. And all the horses have been rescued in the first place. So it's exactly the kind of support service we're going to need in the future. We have to think of a wider landscape in terms of healthcare, and this should be part of it. The best thing about this horse centre is the horses and getting to look after them because you don't get to do that every single day. Uh, it feels relaxed. I feel like relaxed and not being stressed at school. I like brushing the horses. It's my favourite thing coming here. Do you want to carry that for me, please, Adam? Thank you. We've got to go and get Fly and Dream some food now. The people that own the land, uh, they need the land back because they're a charity and they need the land back to, for their own fundraising. And um, we've known for about a year now that we need to leave and we've worked non-stop for that whole year to try and find some more land to operate from. And we've still not been successful. I have actually sold my house. We're living in a friend's conservatory. I've sold my house so that if I need cash to buy land, I've got the cash. That's how desperate we are. And we are absolutely desperate for help at the minute. We need roughly about seven to ten acres. We're just looking for someone to just help us so that we can just keep this going. And then go in and out the cones, swinging your belly button round. Swing, that's it. Keep walking. Keep walking. Good boy. I think it'd be tragic for all young people that this place helps. Um, this boosts people's confidence, their self-esteem, teaches them about their place in the world, how other people react to them, and it, you know, it can, it could literally change people's lives. This is brilliant, Jessica. Take it. Look how you're going in and out those cones now. One, two, three. Stop your feet. This is a very important brilliant. asset. And I would expect in a county such as Leicestershire, and we're five miles from Corn here, that somebody out in the equestrian community can come up with some help in terms of land in the short term while we try and resolve these issues with the council for Judith and her school. That's a brilliant push. You got it. Stroke her. Good girl. Tell her she's a good girl.